Hi, today I'm going to show you this game, Save the Animals, uh, from a fire, sadly. Uh, no real animals are harmed during this. And I'm pushing the number keys. Whoops, those are birds. So that bird ended up in the fire. Sorry, bird. A couple of birds over there. You have to teleport them out of the burning forest. So we got monkeys and birds. When we get to level five, it's going to also give us cats. We're at level four now. So there's a monkey, bird, monkey. Uh, monkey, monkey, bird. And pretty soon here, whoops, mistake, monkey. Okay, here's level five, so it's a little faster. And there's a cat, so it goes there. Bird, monkey, cat. And it gets faster and faster, and you get the idea. So that's what I'm going to show. But I'm going to work my way up to it. Let's start with a Hello World program. Here's an HTML file. And this is loading Phaser. That's from Phaser, P-H-A-S-E-R dot I-O. And then it loads a script file, game.js, which is here. And this is just these 18 lines of code that do a Hello World program in Phaser. So let's run this. You can see what it is. And this is just text. Um, the Hello World text. Move that over a little bit. Uh, so how does this work? Well, when the window loads, we create a phaser game from this main scene. And here's the main scene class, which extends phaser scene. And we only use the create method. And in there we add text consisting of hello world and with these font characteristics in this color. And the background for the canvas that this is on is this color here. And, um, and that's it. Now let's look at one that does the same thing, but it's with the sprite. So similar index file, but here's the sprite. Uh, and I think what I did was I just took a picture. I just took a screen grab of this and saved it as a ping. And then the game code is maybe a little bit longer. Um, so let's run this one. Now we have a bigger canvas that we're working in and then the code in here makes the sprite rotate. So let's, let's study that. Now we're using the preload, create and update methods in the scene. And in the preload method, we're loading that ping and calling it hello. And in create, we're adding a sprite to the scene um, that is the hello sprite. And we're putting it in the middle. And then in the update, which happens for every frame of the animation, we're increasing the angle by 0.1 degrees. And that's it for that one. Now here is a bouncing ball. Again, the index file is pretty similar. Here's the ball ping. It's got the transparent background. And then the game code, now a little bit longer still. Let's run. Here's a bouncing ball. Notice the ball rotates as it bounces. It's not completely realistic if it rubs against the side, it doesn't get the spin changed as you would expect. But look at this rotating here that really looks like a rolling ball. And that's just because I'm matching the movement on the x-axis with the rotational velocity. Um, let's look at that a little bit. Um, what do we have that we recognize? Here is this code that creates the phaser game. There's some new stuff in here to turn on physics. And it has part of that to set the gravity. You can change this and it really changes how things, uh, how things bounce. Um, preload is similar. We're loading a ping. And then in create, we're adding a sprite, but we're doing it through this.physics, which turns on the arcade style physics features. And here we set the bounciness to 0 0.95. Um, that's a number between 0 and 1. If you set it to 0, it won't bounce at all. And select, uh, set collide world bounce makes it bounce off the edges. And set velocity 
um, makes it move a little bit to the right as it goes. This is the X and this is the Y component of the velocity, separate from what um, the simulated gravity will do. And then we set drag so that it um, encounters some, I don't know, air resistance, I guess, or maybe friction in the bounces. And then the graphic is really too big for the for this, so I shrink it down rather than rescale the graphic. Um, and then here in the update, uh, I set the angular velocity to match, uh, to be proportional to the movement, to the velocity on the x-axis. That's what makes it uh, seem to roll nicely. Okay, let's look now at the, uh, the game again. And the sword or burn game, I, I'm kind of regretting that. It's sad that these animals are, uh, even fake ones, have to go to a fire. Um, but the code is written such that you could replace the fire with something else. You could replace the animals. You could replace those teleporters and the background image, and the code would still work. It's basically just your, um, it's a game to try to quickly categorize things and send them to the right place. Um, so let's look under assets. These are the birds. And in the credits, I say where things came from. Most of the images came from here. And the nice feature is they're, they're licensed such that you don't even, you can, you can use them however you want. And you don't even have to give credit to anybody. The teleporter is adapted from here on Flickr. And this is an attribution license. And so this is my attribution where I'm giving credit. Um, and then the ambient fire, the fire sounds come from these places. And here I'm giving the, making the attribution. Um, okay, so here are the birds. Um, there's a burn sound. Here are the cats. And these are, notice these are loaded into a single image. And this is known as a sprite sheet. And I made the sprite sheets, I think I have a note about it here, with image magic, which is a nice tool. So I started with the individual images themselves, and then I ran this command. And it took all the images and made those kind of thumbnails, 200 by 150, um, and tiled them in a 5 by 1 arrangement and put it in this cats file. Uh, the fire looks like this. The jungle looks like this. Here are the monkeys. Here's the teleporter. Those are the assets. And now the code, let me just get these out of the way. The code, let's start with this. So this is the, the main game code. Just want to give you a feel for how much code there is. And I'm going to probably go through quickly and then I might have a series of videos where I explain, where I kind of build this up from nothing and explain it more thoroughly. Um, but we've got the, the game code here, the main file, and then we have um, the code that handles the fire, the sprite, and the related sounds. And then what I call the savees, which is just a made-up word um, for the things that you're saving, which in this um, implementation of the game is the animals. And then the targets, that's those teleporters. And then the text, that's the, the words that appear on the screen. All right. Um, so let's start with the game. What do I want to show you here? I'm going to the bottom to show you where everything loads. And the window.onload contains this anonymous method uh, function, sorry, that creates the game. And it creates it from main scene, which is up here in the same file. Main scene extends phaser scene. And as before, we have, we're have we using preload. Here, let me just turn on the structure. This might be a little too small to see, but we've got preload, create, and update. No, we don't use update. Just preload and create for the phaser type of methods that we implement. Um, so what do we have here? What do I want to talk about? We create the fire. And um, we say that the, here are the things that we're saving, the different categories. We have the monkeys category, birds and cats, and where they are stored. So the monkeys are stored in the monkeys JPEG. These are the dimensions of each um, image within. And then um, the game ends if you, if you burn 
10 targets. I should show you the end of it, or you can see it on your own. Um, we start at level one, then we create the targets, the savees, the text, load the background image, and that's it for the preload. Then in create, I think I'll move this over now so we don't wrap. In create, we create the background, and then for each of the texts, the text targets and fire, we create them in this new style JavaScript uh, for each on an array. And then we uh, program the, the input. So you can, uh, this is for touch, if you're doing it on a smartphone or tablet or something, um, or even the, the mouse. When you click, then we call select target. So you, you, can, you can use the number keys, which is what I was doing, one, two, or three, to choose the target. Or you can click on the target or touch the target. So this calls select target for that. And here for the key down, this sees if you've typed one, two, or three at the right time, and then it also calls select target. And then um, set burn change, burn change listener on the text. The text needs to know, um, let's see, text needs to know set burn change listener. I've uh, forgotten what this does. It has to do with here setting the volume in the fire for when you um, more and more are burned. And when you get um, greater than or equal to the maximum, then the fire consumes the world and then, and then everything stops. Okay, then we add an event so that every 10 seconds we increment the level and we notify other parts of code that need to know about that. And then in create background, this adds the background sprite, makes it um, somewhat transparent, sets, sets it so it's the right size, and then sets the origin to zero. And this is not terribly interesting, nor is this, or this. And that's it for the game um, program. Uh, Okay, so now uh, in intermission, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play it. I'll just jump to the end, so you can see it. So let's go to here, and run, and come over here, and I'll bring you back when I get to the end. Okay, there's the end. That's what happens. Fire consumes the jungle. It's a disaster. Okay, how does the fire work? Well, we have a class for it and a constructor. And here's where we load the uh, fire picture and the two files, uh, the two uh, audio files. Now, um, you may have noticed there's a kind of ambient fire sound, a crackling of a fire that builds as um, more things are burned. Sorry about that. Uh, and then there's the kind of whoosh sound. Um, you can find that file um, on, um, I'll see the credits. I think it's a guy moving a torch or something past a microphone. And then in create, we add the sprite and we add this, excuse me, we add the sounds and we play the fire sound. It's starting out at, um, a volume of zero. So it doesn't start. You can't hear it initially. And then here's a method that gets called to set the volume. And this is what makes that whoosh burning sound. And then this is called at the end when it's time to consume the world. And this makes a, a tween, which is um, changing something over time. And what it changes is the scale of the fire sprite and the um, alpha of it, the transparency. So it, redu it, in it increases the alpha to make it more transparent. And that's so you can see the the words, the kind of the score, um, even after the fire grows to fill the, the scene. Okay, that's fire. Let's go to the, let's do text next because that's small and then we'll work up. Savies, I think, is the hardest. So here's the text and it needs to know how many are sorted and how many are burned. And in the create, we add the text. And then when we when there's one that's sorted, when this is called, we add one to the number of sorted, and then we update the display. Something similar here. Um, 
And here, oh, this is the burn burn changed listener. So this is this is when the number of burned changes. This is a callback to um, the main game part, the part that I couldn't remember before. And then setting the level is down here. And then when the update is called, that's when the text is updated. Okay, let's look at targets now. This is those three um, teleporters. And they come from this teleporter.ping. And we make one for each of those save info things. You remember those? I'm going to jump back and show you. So from the monkeys, birds, and cats categories, we make one each of these um, sprites. And we set the scale. And we make, uh, we have an array of those. And then there's, um, let's see, set num targets. As the game, as we go from level to level, we open up more targets. It starts with only the first target. And this gets called. And then um, what happens when the new targets become available is we undim them by changing the alpha value here. And then closest calculates the closest target to the mouse or finger position if you're touching. Um, you don't have to click right on it. You, um, it just, if you touch the screen or click the screen, it finds which target is closest and then it, it, it activates that sort towards that. Okay, the final part is the save ease. So that manages the creation, movement, and destruction of the objects to be saved. And let's just see how much code we've got here. And I'll go through it kind of quickly. It's 107 lines uh, into these into these methods. So here we go. Save ease. And um, what do we what do we have here? Well, we start off with the uh, you get five seconds between when it appears and uh, when you have to rescue it from the fire. And then here is um, it's 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 a random interval. Um, between the times that the savees appear. And this is the maximum. Uh, this is the upper bound of that random range. And this decreases over time too. So they, uh, they are generated more frequently. And then we make a group of these incoming savees and um, create savee after delay. So this set gives the first one after one second. And we set the level to one. And then for each of these savey infos, again, remember, that's these categories, monkeys, birds, cats. For each of these, we load the sprite sheets. So we load assets, we load um, birds and the cats and the monkeys. Okay, now we're here, create savey after delay. And this says that after the delay has passed, that we will do the following. And if the game's still running, then we add a CV. And then we schedule the creation of the next CV, which is between a half a second and that maximum value that decreases over time. Okay, set level increases the CV creation frequency and movement speed as the level increases. This is uh, something that I described. Um, this code is a little bit complicated. Um, it just maps the level number onto these, um, onto these values. Add save E. Um, it has to consider just the subset of, of categories that are in play. So at the beginning, there's only the one category. And then we add the sprite for the CV, and we pick for the or for the category, and then we pick the individual bird or um, cat or monkey in that category, and then we make a movement tween. So this tween moves the CV from the starting position to the fire over um, over time over this time. And if it gets all the way there, then it gets removed. Then select target is called when you choose a target. You, you click on or type the number for one of those transporters. And 
Um, so this gets the first, um, it gets the lowest CV that's falling down and interrupts the movement of it to the fire and then sets it on its path toward the uh, target. And then when it moves to the target, then it checks to see if you've sent it to the right target. And if you, if you have, then it gives you credit for sorting it. Otherwise, it starts it on its way moving to the fire, uh, which is this next method here. So moving to the fire creates a, a tween. Do you remember tweens change something over time? And so it moves um, the X and Y to go to where the fire sprite is, um, all spread over the duration that is requested. And then, um, let's see, and then this, uh, I think I won't explain this. This is an added feature if it needs to call back to um, the caller to do something else, it does. Okay, here's burn. And this, remember, um, creates that whoosh sound of the flames coming up. And then this tween here takes the um, alpha, let's see, so target CV, alpha zero. Um, what's this doing? Alpha zero. Oh, I think I said earlier that zero is completely transparent and one is opaque. It's the other way. It's the other way around. So an alpha of one means it's fully opaque. So what this does is makes it fade away over a half a second when it reaches the fire. Um, okay, so that's it. And where's the program? I'll show you um, on GitHub, my GitHub repository. Go to repositories and then phaser lessons. Right now it's in phaser lessons. I might move it to its own repository, but all the things I just showed you are in here. And if you want to run the program yourself, you can run it from, um, you'll have to type the URL because I don't have a link to it yet, but it's it's this one, davebsoft.com slash software slash sort or burn. And I might put a link in the, in the YouTube video for this. Okay, that's the end. That was kind of fast, a lot of information, but I hope that was useful to you. See ya.